So let's see, case six. So on this, uh, I think this is the one we tell, tell you the story. Yeah, that's right. I said, you guys tell me the history here. Yeah, so um, when I first looked at, uh, look, look at this, it looks like it's a um, small punch, um, yep. probably below the neck. And um, what I thought was the first artificial looks like it's actually the, the, the pathology is that there's a subepidermal cleft. Good. Um, in different in different areas here. Um, so, uh, thinking that you want a story, I then dove deeper into the dermis. Okay. So subepidermal cleft, and then you went deeper. And what did you see deeper? So um, then around the eccrine glands, uh, there's evidence of necrosis. Yes. Uh, you know, kind of that ruffled cuticle with like the with like the pink smudgy stuff in the middle of it. So um, the story is that this unfortunate person is in a coma. Very good. So this is this is the the finding of the classic coma blister. Uh, you're right. And so the two components here, and of course, it doesn't have to be a coma. The the classic idea is that someone who's in a coma and in a in a static position where their body's not moving, they get um, compression of the dependent areas, right, which leads to local acute ischemia because the blood can't flow in there because of the pressure of their weight pushing against it. And uh, so any of the, the, the pressure points will develop ischemia and then that can lead to blister formation. And so that's what's happening here. But it doesn't have to just be in a coma. Anyone who's at a pressure dependent kind of situation will have this effect potentially if they're in have pressure long enough. I've seen, um, I, if I recall, the history on this case was actually a, um, a, a intravenous a drug user who had overdosed and was found alive but but down and incapacitated for a, some long period of time on a, a hard floor, if I recall. And I think this was from like their like the shoulder blade area. But it's been a long time since I saw this case, and I can't remember exactly. I have seen similar um, appearance in a patient who was in a very very long like I think compl a complex surgery. I think maybe it was a neurosurgery, and then on the back of their head, you know, even though they work really hard to pad patients during surgery, they did have one area that had pushed or compressed, and they ended up developing a bolus area later that microscopically showed these features. So I've seen that in other settings. So all of those are due to acute ischemia that's causing death of the epidermis. And if you look, you can see, look, the epidermis here, it's, these cells have nuclei, they're alive. They don't look real happy, but they're alive. But these cells are ghosted, right? You can see the shape of the individual keratinocytes, but the nuclei are dissolving and washing away. And that's the first thing that happens when a cell dies, right? Is that the integrity of the nuclear membrane breaks down and the body, our body is really good at breaking down RNA and DNA, right? We have all these DNAs and RNAs in the body. And so that destroys the nuclear um, DNA. And then that's, as that goes away, all the, what makes the nucleus stain purple, you know, with our hematoxylin, um, a part of our H and E stain, the hematoxylin binds to the DNA and makes it look purple. So once the DNA is washed out, the nucleus starts to disappear. But the cytoplasm is made of protein mostly, right? In this case, keratin proteins. Um, and those proteins are very strong intermediate filaments and they hang around for a long time, even once the cell's dead. I mean, that's how we have a stratum cornea, right? That's all dead keratin that's just hanging out there intact for a long time after the cell that made it is long gone and dead. And so in any case, what that's how we get the washed out kind of a ghost appearance of the individual keratinocytes with the dissolving, disappearing, fading nuclei. And we know this happened rapidly because if you had an insult to the epidermis over time that started to kill it, you would get other reactive changes in the corneal layer, like namely parakeratosis, right? The epidermis would try to repair itself. But this happened pretty suddenly in, you know, a day or less probably in, in, in such a short time that the, the keratin layer looks basically normal. They didn't have any time for the epidermis to react. It just totally wiped out. So whenever you see this pattern of dying epidermis with a normal corneal layer usually, and you may or may not begin to see blister formation, it depends how long it's been there. The first step is that it just wipes out and dies. And then eventually, if enough of it dies, it loses its connection with the dermis and the epidermis, the dead epidermis begins to lift away and form the true, you know, subepidermal blister that's due to the necrosis. So this can be seen in the setting of pressure induced acute ischemia like coma blister, but you can also see this exact identical pattern over top of anything that's um, blocking the blood vessels, the arteries down below in the deeper dermis or subcutis. So if I see this on a biopsy, I know there's acute ischemia and I need to figure out why. Is it because they have calciphylaxis 
and this is an area that just hasn't formed an eschar yet? Is it that they have angioinvasive fungus and it's blocking off the vessels or they have uh, diffuse intravascular coagulopathy or hemolytic uremic syndrome or some other uh, systemic coagulopathy, right? So if I see this, I need to figure out why is there ischemia? So that's that's the nice clue. Uh, to, and then the clinical story we need to sort out to, to figure out why. Um, then the other thing that can cause this is uh, uh, cryogenic or thermal injury can produce like a wiped out epidermis also. So a burn or a freeze could, could do a similar thing. And then as you noted here, um, the fact that we have this finding in the eccrine coils, that tells us it's not burn or freeze, it definitely is ischemia, because the eccrine coils for some reason are very sensitive to a hypoxic state into ischemia. So one of the first things that you begin to see die when you have acute ischemia is the eccrine coils, and it seems to particularly be the, the secretory part of the eccrine coil. As the coil transitions into the actual sweat duct, the sweat duct is still, it's got a little bit of degenerating changes and kind of vacuolation here, but it's still alive, right? It's nuclei are still intact, but this stuff is long gone, wiped out and necrotic, right? You see the little tube where the, the epithelial cells of the, the eccrine coil used to be, but they're all just mush. They've all died and started to break down, and you can see that process in action right here. So it seems, that, and I love this particular slide because it shows so nicely how the coil dies, but the duct part is more resilient, it seems. And um, so this is a clue also to acute ischemia, is seeing eccrine coil necrosis and epidermal necrosis. And in this case, it was uh, due to, to coma blister pressure-induced ischemia. All right. Very good. Oh, let's look at the other piece to see if there's anything else on that side. I can't quite grab the... There we go. And here's more. Eccrine coils dead. Eccrine duct still intact. Epiderm is dead, acutely killed with a normal cornea layer and beginning to separate. And for anyone at home who's wondering what all this dark black stuff is, that's just our black ink that we put. We use different colors of ink sometimes to mark margins, and sometimes it gets a little bit messy and unfortunately uh, gets into all the spaces here. Also note this person probably was a darker skin patient because you can see um, abundant melanin pigment in their basal keratinocytes. Even though the keratinocytes are dead, the melanin is still in there. So... Okay, great, good work. Coma blister.